Hey everybody, I am hoping that this is working. Um, let me uh, check something, hold on. Hoping that this is working. Um, Okay, I think it seems to be on. I'm going to turn down the volume on my iPad. Um, I, have, I do have the settings so that you have to be a subscriber to participate in the chat. So if you haven't done that, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm just going to check in with the Facebook event and make sure that the link is still good. Um, I'm, I'm still learning this new software called OBS. So if anybody has experience with that, please let me know. Um, it, it's basically the program that allows me to uh, stream and share my screen. So this is my first time doing that. And I am just going to the Facebook page hopefully the link is still good because i i did a test video with the scheduled live link which i then had to delete because it was it didn't work so let's just do that thank you for your patience everybody as i learn this so okay i'm just gonna click here it says video unavailable. Okay, so I just need to post a new link real quick. Right now, uh, refresh. I grew up when the internet, you know, started, but I never really got super into it. Thank you for your patience, right. everybody, oh, as I look. Shit. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna copy this link and edit this. Okay. Okay, hopefully that worked. I put it in the discussion of the event and I'm just gonna double check that now again too. Edit. It's a Sunday afternoon. Um, oh, perfect. Okay, that worked. Hopefully there's some people here Please, if you have any questions, feel free to put, the, put it in the chat on the YouTube and I will take a look afterwards and answer any questions. The actual presentation will probably be about 30 minutes and I wanted to just leave some time for, uh, the, pres for the uh, Q&A. So here we go. I am going to share my screen and we'll go through this presentation. Um, okay, so we're going to the screen share. Let's see if that's working. Is that working, everybody? Um, oh, there we go. Okay, it's this. Okay. Got it. Play for, okay, so we're going to, it's basically a slideshow that I'm going to play for you. This is a presentation that I've given at some different events. So I guess I should introduce myself. My name is Ellie and I've been making hemp paper for 10 years now. I started in 2012. Um, I used to do a ton of nature photography. It was, it became a beautiful meditation for um, like being out in nature and being present like using my camera as a way to be in the moment and focus on the beauty of the natural world and it's so healing to be out in nature and so i started doing a bunch of photography let me see if i have some and then i started selling my photos making greeting cards and prints and I had read a book called The Emperor Wears No Clothes when I was a senior in high school. So 
I was like mind blown when I found out that hemp could be used for paper, you know, that it wasn't just smoking weed and healing with that, but it was, it was good for so many things. So automatically when I started selling larger quantities of my greeting cards, I only felt good about using hemp paper. So this is a image of, uh, one of my photos on a, on a greeting card, it's in a little protective sleeve, so I'll take it out. But like, you know, close up of a rose and studies have shown that patients in hospitals that have images of nature around, even if it's a window to look outside and see trees or a photo or a picture, a painting of the natural world, they actually heal more quickly and require less painkillers. So it's, you know, it's just amazing stuff. We need nature and beauty to to be healthy. And yeah, you know, and obviously the number one nutrient humans need for survival is oxygen and we need trees. And so it doesn't make sense to cut down trees for paper when we can make paper from so many other plants, hemp included, but it's not the only plant that we can make paper from. So that being said, I, I d went in on this journey of making paper because I wasn't able to find 100% hemp paper. So the, the paper that I had my greeting cards printed on was a hemp and recycled paper blend. It's 25% hemp, 75% post-consumer waste, which is awesome. Um, but me as an artist, I wanted something pure hemp that's archival, that's going to last many, many years and not turn yellow and break down. And um, there's just something about the vibe, right? The vibration of like hemp paper um, is just high vibe. So it's great for art. And so that being said, I asked the company that I was buying the paper from and getting the cards printed on if they could do 100% hemp, and they told me no. Um, it was really expensive. At that time, there were not American hemp farmers. You know, all of the hemp material was imported from Europe and China. So it was just too expensive. You know, shipping costs alone make it not um, a good business model to do that. Um, and I literally woke up one day thinking, well, how hard is it to make hemp paper? And I remember that there was a, a nonprofit art studio down the street from where I was living that actually has a paper studio and they teach classes. It's a nonprofit devoted to the book arts. So they have paper making, all kinds of different print making, like letterpress and um, and book binding classes. So I I've uh, had money saved up, so I got some some classes, some one on one lessons actually, because they didn't have any like hemp specific paper making classes. So that's when my journey began, and um, I had uh, been asked to teach to be a guest lecturer at the University of Oregon e-course on industrial hemp. So I put together a presentation for that. And then my friend in DC shot a video showing the process. That, and that's the how to make hemp paper video that I had it on YouTube for a while. Right now I have it in my Patreon. I'm still figuring out what the best way is to have, like I wanna have a lot of free education and resources and then also have special videos that are unique and like exclusive to the patreon to the patreon members so if you are part of that thank you for your support it means so much and even just if you could like and um, like the videos and subscribe to the youtube channel it really helps me a lot um, it encourages me to keep going and Maybe, you know, one day I'll be able to quit my day job and, and do this full time. So that's the goal because the more energy and time I can put into it, um, the more I can share. And there's so much more I want to do besides paper. Like, I think we can make baskets. That's been something that's on my mind. 
baskets and then other types of um, just artisanal, you know, handmade products from hemp, from the fiber, seed, uh, flower extract. Um, so if you're new to the um, to this live video, feel free to put any questions in the comments. I'm going to run through a presentation and then I'll do a Q&A at the end. So thank you for being here. I think there might be one person. So I really appreciate that because um, I think I was talking to myself for a while. Um, anyway, if you want the recording, it, it's it'll be available on my Patreon and I'm still figuring out how how I'm doing things here, but I do plan on doing more videos. So that was a little background on me. Um, so let's get into it. I'm just, I'm doing this PowerPoint today to give an overview. And then in the future, I'll do more how to and live videos of actually showing the process. I am scheduling a tour of a local hemp farm here in Kentucky, where we're going to visit a fiber farm and then also hopefully make it there for the harvest. They ordered a a um, harvest machine from uh, Nebraska. So they're waiting for that machinery to arrive. And I'm trying to plan it out so that I can actually be there for harvest so I can pick up the fibers, bring it back here, show you like the entire process of what I do from picking up the fibers from the farmer to actually getting a finished sheet of hemp paper. And I will also be putting together a do it yourself, like hemp paper making kit, so you can make your own at home and then an online course. So if you want to follow along for that um, and make your own paper, you can do that. So first of all, what is paper? You know, a lot of people think of paper as papyrus, which is actually not true paper. Um, papyrus is the bark of a plant of the papyrus plant that's been woven together and then um, a layer of glue is applied, uh, glue made from starch. So paper is actually when you when you mash the cellulose, the fibers down to like you just break it open, you blast open and separate the cellulose. And then you're basically breaking them apart and putting them back together. And the first paper that was ever made was made in China uh, by a man named Sai Lun who worked for the emperor and uh, he mashed up a bunch of old fishing nets with which were made from hemp so they were hemp uh, rope and then he added mul mulberry bark which makes beautiful paper um, so he mixed in a little bit of water and used a mallet and um, broke it down into a pulp and then spread the pulp out uh, onto a thin layer and laid it out in the sun to dry so that's really the basic process of making paper. Um, there's a, different ways you can do things, but that's really the basics. And these images show some of the paper I've made. Um, this one on the right is backlit. So you can see there's a really nice even formation. And then these darker pieces are little bits of, of herd in there, which is the the inner woody core of the hemp stalk so it gives it a little character and then on the left you can see that even though these are all 100 percent hemp paper um, there's a lot of different variation like a lot of um, different tones and textures that you can get all with 100 percent hemp paper so um yeah so you know and then Another side note is that before paper, like if you're wondering what people did to record information and share, um, people would carve like um, clay tablets, they would carve rocks and um, use things like ash or, or rocks, like minerals to paint, you know, on, on like cave walls and stuff like that. So a little bit about the benefits of using hemp for paper versus timber. Um, hemp is a lot higher in cellulose than timber. Uh, the cellulose is the component of the plants that we use for paper. And uh, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture Bulletin published in 1916, which was written by Leister Dewey, who was a botanist at the USDA, 
And he did a lot of research on fiber crops, a lot of hemp, also flax and other other crops. He There was actually hemp growing at the site of where the Pentagon now stands. So there's a ton of hemp history with, you know, the U.S. government, like, studying hemp. And so according to that report, it said that one acre of hemp could produce the same amount of paper that, you know, four acres of trees could over a 20-year period. And that's huge, right? Like, hemp can be harvested 20 times over that period, maybe more depending on the climate. And if you're growing for, if you're harvesting for fiber, you can harvest before flowering and maybe get two crops in a season. You know, whereas trees are harvested once during that 20 year period. And one thing to keep in mind is that when you cut down a tree, you're not just cutting down a tree, right? You're destroying an ecosystem where, you know, the homes of so many animals and critters Fungi, you know, there's a whole network of fungi communicating, connecting the trees. So, you know, there's people in the paper industry that justify it by saying that they plant two trees for every one that is cut down, but they don't seem to connect the fact that, you know, a tree is not just a tree. It's like a home for so many living beings and it, it provides shade and, and so many other benefits. So um, because hemp has such a high cellulose content and lower lignin, which is what's removed uh, in, the, in the paper making pulping process, we don't need to use it as toxic chemicals. So the paper industry is the second largest cause of water pollution on the planet because they use such harsh chemicals to remove the lignin and pulp it and that gets into the water and you know into the food that we're growing so you know there's so many reasons why hemp is just a great resource for using for hemp for paper and then for other products i mean there's thankfully it's becoming more mainstream and there's been like even the more, um, you know, big publications writing about it. Like even the New York Times had an article about hempcrete, which is the hemp herd that that's combined with lime to build with. It's amazing stuff, and you know, clothing, medicine, food, fuel. Uh, why is hemp not being used for paper? So. We just, we don't, we need innovation. Um, the machinery that's in all of the big paper mills was created for timber, um, not the annual bast fibers, which are really strong and hard to break down. Um, so the um, modern, yeah, the modern paper making industry just wasn't designed for it because they, um, you know, when paper making first started, it was all being done by hand. They were using rags to make paper with, and, and most of the rags were cotton and hemp. And after the invention of the automatic printing press, they needed a lot more paper. You know, they were able to print so much more quickly that they're just like, holy shit, we ran out of rags. So they looked around and saw whatever was cheap and abundant, and that was timber. You know, so another example of not not seeing the big picture, right? Not playing the long game. So, you know, trees started getting cut down. Um, and then there's a lot of theories about competing industries. We won't get into all that now, but, you know, there's probably... Um, there's a little bit of a rabbit hole you can go down if you want to. What is it? William Randolph Hearst is a big name that I keep hearing about. <laughs> um, some of the environmental benefits of growing hemp for paper. Um, hemp enriches the soil as it grows. It nitrogen fixes, so it's a great rotation plot uh, crop. Um, 
the deep roots protect soil from runoff. It has phytoremediation properties like sunflowers, where it detoxifies and regenerates the soil. So it actually soaks up and removes chemicals, heavy metals, radiation, and other toxins. So it's cleaning the soil as it grows, cleaning the air. It absorbs CO2 emissions and has the potential to end logging for paper. You know, that is a habitat for plants and animals. Forests are the lungs of our planet. We cannot survive without them. And they produce it produces four times as much pulp in one acre compared to timber. So you've, you've heard me mention the term lignin a few times. Maybe you're thinking, what the heck is lignin? Um, it's basically the glue that binds the cellulose together in a plant. So it uh, provides protection for the plant against climate, pathogens and pests, water, uh, or it helps move water around and um, works with seed dispersion so that the, pl the plant will bend and not break like in harsh winds or storms. It has a brownish color and because wood is a lot higher in lignin than hemp, it requires harsher chemicals to remove it. Um, some people that are into GMOs have proposed GMO trees to reduce lignin, and that doesn't sound very healthy. Um, you know, why would we want to get rid of the tree's natural protect, you know, protective system? We don't know, um, you know, what the long-term effects that would have. So, you know, hemp is lower in lignin. It doesn't require these harsh chemicals. And then lignin has some uses as well, like as an adhesive, um, even inks and um, epoxy, binders, things like that. I think you can also break it down and remove sugar, different sugars and other components. There's a company called uh, Pure Technologies that is actually producing products from lignin. They also have a pulping operation that um, it basically separates all of the parts of the hemp. So some benefits of hemp paper, it can be recycled many more times than wood. It holds its shape, it stretches less, very durable, excuse me, resistant to mold and UV light, and it can be made archival. So it doesn't yellow or decompose over the years. Um, it has to be made in a certain way. It's not automatically archival, but if you balance the pH, basically make it have a neutral pH, it will be acid-free archival, perfect for artists and like for, you know, important documents and things like that. Um, hemp paper market, you know, there's so many types of papers we can make from it from fine art paper, cardstock, that's been my focus, you know, regular print and copy paper, notebooks, you know, boxes, paper towels, toilet paper, people have talked about that. I've tried, I mean, I've used the handmade paper. It's not very nice to wipe your ass with, but, um, you know, I think, that's going to happen for sure. I think if we mix some herd in there, it'll be a little more absorbent. And, you know, packaging, awesome coffee filters would be a great one. There's a great company in Spain that's the big producer of rolling papers. I'm just going to have a sip of uh, some liquid here. Oh, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> this is like... Uh, a test, so bear with me. I'm still getting used to um, doing this type of live presentation. Um, so when we talk about the hemp fiber for paper, the the hemp stalk is composed of two main parts: the outer bast fiber, which is the long, stringy fiber. I have a bag of it here. Um, so the outer bast fiber is like. Yeah, the longer, these are actually a little shorter, but this is mostly bast fiber, and then there's little bits of herd. You can see 
this is herd. Um, this is herd. It's a little lighter, and it's it breaks. If you go to snap it, it'll break. Whereas the fiber is is gonna bend. It's flexible. So the fiber is what is used for textiles, and it's super strong. Uh, and it can be, you know, you can use it to make really thin paper that's very, very strong. And I have data that shows like how strong it is. And then depending on the processing method, you can get like super strong. Like it's really amazing. Um, the herd is a shorter fiber, so it adds thickness, texture, and a softer quality to the paper, like a little absorbed, absorbent um, quality. This is a sheet of paper that has like a high amount of herd. I don't know if you could see the texture, um, but let's see, I have some more paper here. This is like another, uh, a smoother sheet. I had done a test print, so there's a little ink blotches, but, or I attempted, I think it got stuck in my printer, but you can see this is mostly Bast fiber, it's really smooth, really beautiful. Um, and then the ratio of fiber to herd is gonna depend on the type of paper you want. So that is a big question I get a lot and I did a six minute live video recently talking about that um, because people ask if I use fiber or herd. Um, I use mostly fiber, sometimes I'll add some herd in there if I want more texture or if I need to decrease the drainage time. Uh, this is a, a little video of a fiber field from 2017 from a farm in Kentucky. You can see there's a lot of males. Those are the pollen sacs, the lighter plants. Um, you know, they're growing for fiber, so it doesn't, we're not worried about seeded flowers. If if this was a CBD farm, they would not want to keep those males in there. Um, you know, there was a big boom for CBD farmers, thankfully. Well, you know, okay. There's, and then there was a bit of a glut, and then the market crashed. So now more farmers are getting into fiber. You know, in the beginning, it was like all of the the hemp activists that were talking about hemp clothing and hemp food for all over the years were, I think, disappointed because when the U.S. legalized hemp farming, so many farmers went to CBD, which kind of was a newer product. You know, people weren't really talking about hemp for CBD until maybe around 2012. At least that's when I really started learning more about it. Um, the Hemp Industry Association Conference had a panel with Martin Lee and Tamar Weiss and, and other experts, CBD experts. And that's when I really learned about it. So, you know, everybody was like, had been talking for 20 years about hemp fabric and hemp paper and all this stuff and hemp foods, and then we can't find any U.S. grown hemp fiber because all the farmers want to grow is CBD. So the market for CBD crashed, and now, and also the other issue was that the fiber processors weren't set in place. So, you know, a farmer can grow a bunch of fiber, but if we don't have the processors around to actually turn it into a usable product, then it's a waste. And, you know, even though I'm doing it on a small scale, it's not enough to really turn the needle, move the needle. So I am working on some larger projects and there are a good amount of companies here. I'm hearing of more processors popping up in the US and companies that are specifically doing R&D on the textile side and paper as well. So it is really exciting. Um, so after the fiber is harvested, the next process is called redding. And that comes from the word rotting. It's a process that 
partially breaks down the the stalk and the lignin starts breaking down and it basically makes it easier to decorticate. And that means to separate the bast fibers from the herd. There are three different methods to ret, field or do ret, which is when the stalks are laid down in the fields and exposed to the elements for a couple of weeks, turned over halfway. Um, you do have to be careful and mindful of the humidity and moisture because it can result in mold. And these structures are called shocks. That's another way um, that they are laid in the field for redding. Um, this photo was actually taken at a farm in North Carolina. And um, historically, there's a lot of old images of farms that use this method. So it was a big common thing to see. Like back in the day, you'll see hemp fields with these shocks, like a bunch of them, you know, in a field. And water redding is another method um, where you submerge the stalks, preferably in a running water source like a creek, or I guess you could use like um, a pump or something like to get air in there. Um, it actually lightens the fibers, so it's a really nice non-chemical method to get lighter fibers. Um, and then you can steam the stalks. That's actually one of my favorite ways which I found out about in a papermaking book, a Japanese papermaking book. And I had some uh, stalks that I got from a West Virginia farmer that had been hung to dry. And what happened is that they, they weren't redded, like it was dried and the fiber, the outer fiber, got like as the lignin hardened it almost it kind of got like glued to that inner part and just the whole thing like hardened up and so it was really hard if I went to try to just peel or decorticate the the fiber so I steamed them like just like I was steaming a asparagus or something you know I put a little bit of water in the bottom of a pot and then um steam it for you know a couple of hours until basically until the outer fiber peels right off and it just slid right off it was really cool and then the the nice thing about it too is that the herd stays whole so then i had these like longer pieces of herd which could be fun to play around with like i think it would be good like to make charcoal with you know some places sell sticks of charcoal that you can put in water to purify it or uh or even so because the herd has a little it's hollow inside it actually might be cool to make pencils or crayons with it that's been another thing i want to try to do um these are some photos of steaming so here on the left the green is that was when I was at Pine Ridge, a native reservation in South Dakota. There were fresh plants there. So I steam redded those. And then the other side, the right side, is showing a different crop that I, I got stalks from a friend in D.C. that was growing high THC cannabis. So it had a lot of branches. Um, there were thinner branches and things like that. So I steamed it. And it smelled great, by the way, too. Like, you can stick your face in there and steam your face, and it, it smelled like tea. It was delicious. Uh, and then I, I hand-peeled the stalk. So on the, on the right, this is just that outer bast fiber. So it's also, like, a really beautiful method to get just the pure bast fiber. If you don't want any herd, that is a great way to do it. Um, next, uh, so this is... Um, showing the decortication and chopping um, these are small hand scale like hand scale methods but then there are larger um, machine decorticators available now and basically it's the same action where it is on the left here it's a, called a hemp break and it's basically you know, a piece that you raise up and down and you're just smashing the hemp and as you do that the the herd breaks and falls down and then you're left with the long 
strands of fiber and and then here are the hackles it's like you're combing hair basically and that is helping to also um remove any herd that is still in there and then get it really clean and ready for spinning if you're doing textiles and this is one of my favorite photos from pine ridge on the left is the wild hemp that was growing outside of alex white plume's house and then the morning that i was going to be teaching paper making i got up early to separate the stocks um and these young kids and two dogs came by and i asked if they wanted to help and they were like yeah and it looked like they were having fun you know it is kind of uh, it's fun it's like nice to work with your hands and be productive so that was a beautiful moment in time so the next step would be to cook the fibers although i would add here that over the years, I have learned that it does work better if you chop the fibers before cooking. So like I cut them down into like half inch pieces or one inch pieces if I'm not able to get fiber that's already shorter. Like this stuff that I have, it's kind of shorter. This stuff I would consider already cut down small enough to just throw it in a pot and cook it. Um, you know, if, if you don't do that, you can end up with really long fibers that will then slow down the pulping process because it'll get um, wrapped around the gears of the pulper if you're using a Hollander beater. So, uh, you know, I would just add, chop the fibers down a little bit if you can or if you want to. Otherwise, you're going to make up that time later on. So... What I, um, so basically you're cooking the lignin out um, using an alkali solution. Um, soda ash is what's commonly used. Whoop. And then you could also make your own lye using wood ash. You can use lye. I experimented with that one time and I'm not going to do it again. I ended up with a harsh chemical burn. It was horrible. If you do use lye, wear gloves and goggles. Uh, yeah, it was like a fight club initiation. <laughs> so um, cook the fibers two to four hours until they break easily apart. Uh, a well-known paper maker says to cook them basically until you can hold the fibers between your, your fingers and it'll pull apart like cooked celery and then you do want to rinse it really well the cooking water you'll see is really brown so that's the lignin and i have thought about maybe boiling it down and using that lignin for paint or ink so that would be a fun thing to experiment with in the future um this is an image of cooking the fresh peeled bark from pine ridge um, another thing you can do is bleach the fibers. This would actually be before cooking, um, but I used uh, hydrogen peroxide. So here on the left are, is unbleached hemp fiber. It was field redded, so it got a little darker. And then on the right, these were the same fibers from the same batch, um, soaked in hydrogen peroxide for maybe a week. So big difference there. Uh, the next method is pulping. So there's a, different methods. You can do hand pulping or beating, or you can use a Hollander beater, which is what's shown here. And this is DOS at Pine Ridge. And um, you basically want to use an action of crushing the fibers. So you're adding water and you're just like crushing. Like think of a twin gear juicer or one of those coffee grinders that's actually not chopping, but crushing. Um, early on, I attempted to use my Vitamix blender to, you know, instead of a pulper, and it almost broke the, the blender because the, the fibers just wrapped around the, the base. Uh, and also what it's going to do, it's just going to chop it down. 
So you'll end up with like a decorative paper, but it's not going to actually create a pulp. Um, if you don't have a Hollander, you can use mallets, like a meat mallet or even t a two by four or like, you know, anything. Here's a video showing my little portable Hollander beater working. It's a little workhorse there. That pulp is pretty much done. There's also a video on my YouTube channel about the time I made paper and pulp with DOS. He's a legend in the hemp industry. He lives in, out in Colorado in Denver. Um, he's like the hemp Santa Claus. Okay. Beating fibers by hand. This is a just a random piece of wood here, like a two by two, and then a mallet here as well. So I would do at least an hour. It um, I I have a video on that as well, and I'm going to be doing more, but. You know, it's quite a workout. It's, it's great. You're going to get a really unique paper from that. It's not going to break it down as much as a machine would, but it does create a beautiful paper. Um, this is an image of a Hollander beater. So basically you have this oval, like this tub or the water and pulp go, the, um, the bed plate, which moves up and down. So when you first put the fiber in there, it's going to be higher up and then you gradually lower it down as the pulp, as it starts getting broken down. Oh, that's interesting. It was, I just noticed this patent was filed on my birthday. I mean, in 1930, but you know, the same day. That's cool. So it's a Gemini. <laughs> uh, this is the five pound beater that I learned on. It's made by David Reyna in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Reyna Beater is what we called it. That thing is a beast. It's awesome. I miss it. I want to get one for when I have a studio one day. How are we doing on time? Oh, I've been talking a lot. I'll try to speed it up. And this is my portable Hollander Beater. I named it Emmanuel after the original Dr. Bronner or the Dr. Bronner because um, his grandson David was very um, kind and generous to donate towards my project. So he, he got this, um, this beater. Um, these are images of the different stages of pulping. On the left, you can see it's not as broken down. On the right, it's basically done. And then sheet forming. So you're using a, a tool called a mold and deckle, submerging it into a vat of slurry, which is the paper maker's term uh, what's what we call basically the pulp that is mixed with some more water and the thickness will or the the amount of water will depend on how thick you want the paper then you're going to lift the mold and deckle up gently shake it you're basically just letting all the water drain out and then as the water drains the cellulose fibers are bonding together and forming a sheet of paper these are some photos. Um, this was also at Pine Ridge. Really awesome seeing people get excited and interact and participate. So here he, this is the mold and decal here. The bottom piece has um, screening on it and then you're submerging it, lifting it up, being patient. You wanna wait until at least the fibers aren't like moving around anymore. So you know enough water has has drained out. Here's an image of me when I had my studio space last year, or it might have been in 2020, pulling a 12 by 18 sheet, letting it drain, pulling off some pieces on the side so I can make sure it's going to be a clean transfer. Thank you all for joining. Um, please, if you enjoy this please like the video and subscribe and check out my patreon Ooh. okay and then the next thing so you're basically making a stack of sheets of paper and then you want to press it this is a traditional press like it's a nice high-end press but um you can also like put sandwich like the sheets of paper in between like wooden boards and stand on it. Like I've, I've done that when I haven't had a paper 
or made like a really simple rig using a wooden frame and a hydraulic jack that you could get in a car store, auto parts store. Um, there's different ways to dry it. There's restraint drying, board drying, and hanging. I wouldn't recommend hanging for pure hemp because it does shrink. If you're, if it's like mostly cotton or recycled paper, it won't shrink as much. Um, board drying works decent. It also depends on the climate. So if it's like super dry and hot, the paper might shrink more because it's drying so quickly. Whereas I have had other times where it was in a more humid area and because I've done workshops in different climates and if it was a little more humid, the paper would dry. It will take a little longer to dry, but it'll be totally flat. But then I've had times where I was doing board drying and it just, it was so hot and dry where we were that it, the paper dried so quickly that it like shrunk a little bit and then kind of blew off the, um, off the actual board. Like this is a little, uh, it's not super wavy, but you can see a little bit of shrinkage and that happens with handmade paper in general. Um, and then restraint drying, which is my favorite where it just, you get the best results, the flattest sheets where you're layering the paper between felts and cardboard and using a fan and then you put weights on top. This is a image of what it looks like. That is from Helen Hybert's paper making book. And this is an image of board drying that was at a workshop. It is going to be a quicker quicker method than restraint drying but you do have the possibility of more shrinkage and also one the back of the paper that is against the board is going to take on the texture of the board so in this case I used plexiglass and it ended up being really smooth um, also if you have any questions I'll go over Q&A at the end I'm almost done with the presentation um, these are some cool decorative papers. Like I love putting fresh cannabis leaves in between two sheets of paper and it just creates this beautiful, unique sheet. And then here also, um, at this workshop, we had participants like make their own paper and find plants and flowers and put in there. So that's always a fun thing you can do. Um, you can use different pigments, gold leaf, leaves, flower petals, seeds. So you can make plantable paper. This is an image of a Ford, a Ford Rainier machine, which is the automatic paper machine. Um, I, I would love somebody to build me one. Like most paper machines are huge. I kind of want something on, a, on the smaller size, but it's the same method. So the pulp here is going onto a screen. It's the water is draining out. It's going through rollers, which is the press. It's pressing the rest of the water out. And then there are heated rollers too that that's drying it. And then it goes onto a roll. Um, in 2018, I spent all of my savings on a pilot run of machine made paper and it failed. And I learned a lot. This is me in front of that paper machine. It, the mill has actually moved, so they have a bigger machine now. Um, I do know what went wrong, which is good. So I learned a lot and got some data. And um, but yeah, I have a whole other presentation on that. Maybe I'll share someday. These were some images. I was looking into doing some smoking papers, but then also the art papers, which is something I still am planning to do. Um, I tested it out, smoked great. <laughs> Below are some, these were some of the test papers. They did blends. I've been pretty stubborn about wanting 100% hemp paper. So I've had them do different blends, doing just hemp, some bast. Heard they've also done timber blends uh, to compare because they do strength tests and other tests of the paper and different thicknesses as well. So you can see there is um 40 gsm 
120 GSM, which is going to be thicker. It's grams per square meter. So that is like the term for how heavy the paper is. So that's going to be how thick it is, basically. So, you know, in conclusion, we need more R&D. And it's a really exciting time for the hemp industry now that there are more hemp farmers and more or hemp far, uh, fiber farmers and more fiber processors coming on board. Like this stuff is beautiful. I'm going to do a series of, well, okay, I'm going to do videos making paper with this fiber. And then also, like I mentioned earlier, the farm tour. Hopefully I'll make it to the harvest and show you the process from like actually picking up the fiber from the farm, getting it ready, doing the, the cooking, pulping, sheet forming, pressing, and drying. So that is the basics of how to make hemp paper. I think, okay, this is the end of my slideshow. And like I said earlier, I'm still figuring out how <laughs> like this program for the live, I'm using like a special program to be able to share my screen. So um, check in the Q&A here, I got my iPad set up so I don't see any questions. Um, I did set it so only subscribers could ask questions. That's my little, uh, yeah, I was trying to get more subscribers. So <laughs> if you want, uh, that would help me so much if you um, subscribe, share, like the video, and I will be posting more videos soon. Thank you everybody for tuning in and supporting my work over the years. And um, I'm excited to do more. But if there's anything you want to see, any ideas, please feel free to reach out. Uh, I am Artisan Hemp on Facebook, YouTube, um, Instagram, Twitter, although I'm not really active on Twitter, artisanhemp at gmail.com. And I will end the video if you don't have any questions, but thank you all so much and hope you have a great rest of your day.